Iraq and the help is funding in Sardegna the Gondia being in South of Italy, a historical and morphological approach. This is the summary. After a brief introduction, I'm going to present then to discuss as well the principal aspects of the Roman Equidad <coughs> and the Helios family. And finally, some conclusive remarks. Let's start with the introduction. The volatility of water in large quantity has been considered an essential part of the civilized way of life in different periods. As a matter of fact, Roman banks needed a lot of water, as does the common Western way of life. Usually, the Romans transported water to the city, such as in the river flow, by means of the Necra, whose construction started from the spring in the supported cup pathway and ended in the Castellum Aqua di Soil or the Room. In general, Roman aqueducts were built for several purposes to supply beds, military lines, domestic supplies, garden irrigation, aquatic shows, road wheels, decorative fountains, and public fountains. Public fountains were usually located in the street. For instance, in the famous Pompeii, the fountains were located at very annually spaced intervals of about 100 meters, and therefore it was free for anyone to have to carry their water for more than 50 meters. The simplest form of the street fountain was normally equipped with an oblong stone basin, typically about 1.5, 1.8 meters, and 0.8 meters high. The fountains, this is an important consideration, were deliberately designed to overflow in order to clean the street. The popular but inaccurate image is that Roman aqueducts were related to our their entire length on lines of arches, but it is well known, and because there is an electric power, Roman engineers were very practical, and therefore, whenever possible, the aqueduct followed the steady downhill course at or below ground level. This is particularly true for villages and small cities, where an aqueduct often consisted of a simple gallery. In practice, the excavation of a gallery in rock was considered a fundamental technique of ancient and early engineering, directly derived from mining engineering. Compared to open channels, the principal advantage of a gallery in rock consists in the fact that they are totally or partially hidden. And the slope of the gallery does not depend on the morphology of the ground. Finally, the minimum gallery section was determined obsolete by the need of human access. Therefore, the specus was typically 1.6 meters high with a width of 70 to 120 centimeters. The aim of this work is just to present and to discuss the principal historical and morphological uh, aspects of the gallery rock and some historical consideration about the heavius fountain. The village of San Vigil del Montalpino belonged to the city of Lucenia from ancient time to the Napoleonic period. During the period of the Triumvirate, probably due to urban mass migration, some inhabitants of Lucenia began to build little settlements on the side of the surrounding mountains, outside of city walls. There were rural settlements needing water for both agricultural and domestic uses. Therefore, Probably during the Muslim period, an aqueduct with the technique of the gallery of rock was realized. The Roman aqueduct of San Vigil del Montalpino is still in use, and as I told before, and we are going to see, it continues to supply water for the Helvius fountain. It was entirely excavated in the rock and penetrated the mountains <coughs> down to about 25 meters in order to catch useful springs. A visitor in the uh, gallery passes from the amazement of the construction technique to the astonishment of the naturalistic landscape with the spectacularity of uh, stalactites and with the white of the limestone deposit that shine in the apogeum. This is a schematic map of the Roman uh, aqueduct. We have a principal branch from A to M and three lateral branches, E, G, O, Q, and O, P. 471 meters is the total the system. The principal branch length is 346 meters, or average the slope is 6, 7, sorry, and 73 percent. The gallery rock does not have a uniform cross-section along its entire length. In fact, the principal branch is entirely covered with masonry, while the lateral branches are uncovered. 
Often the trampling plain, as well as part of the lateral sides, are covered by micro roads, which sometimes also clog the lateral raceways used for the road runoff, as is clearly shown in the picture. The cross section of the main branch of the gallery varies in size. The width ranges between 0 0.6 0 0.8 meters, while the height ranges between 1.5 and 1.8 meters. As you can see from the picture, we found four different kinds of roof. Two kinds of vaulted roof, a kind of land roof, a gathered roof, and finally an uncovered roof. This is an internal view of a vertical shaft. The shaft is uncovered. Why? This is an exterior view of the vertical shaft. There are only five uh, vertical shafts. And then the Helvius fountain. This is a picture of the Helvius fountain. This fountain is locally known as Fontana di San Nicola, St. Nicholas Fountain, B I U S L U S. There were probably other words linked to the client or clients and the reason of the realization of the fountain. The Spaniards during 2000 hypothesized that Helvius could be a member of the gens Elvia of Pompeii. He could probably have been Fabius Elvius, rich player from Nigeria. About the dating back, the fountain can be dated back up, um, around the Ustan age due to the use of marble, as well as on the base of the stylistic aspects found. The fountain and surrounding buildings, streets, and the entire territory were probably targeted by the eruption of Mount Vesuvio, that, as is well known, destroyed Pompeii and the Colano in Amalo in 79. The Elvis fountain was a public fountain, but it was quite different from the public fountain in the near Pompeii. In fact, the Helvius fountain was realized in a marble and not in limestone nor in Vesuvian stone. It was not realized by means of matched slab as in the Pompeii. Moreover, there is another important particular aspect which differentiates our fountain from the Pompeian fountains. The Helvius fountain, in fact, has a sculptural decoration on three available sides. Here we have the sculptural, the sculptural decoration on the front of the fountain. In the space between the two frames, there is a half-naked masculine figure in relief with a homely animation wrapping around it, where there is a figure of a young man seated on the rock. He is half-naked with legs and part of the rock covered by a mantle. A dog, as you can see, is to the left of the young man, while and, and the, uh, the figure described corresponds to the symbolization of the upstream path of the river Sarno towards the spring. Here we have the last sculpture decoration on the right side of the fountain. Also here there is a beautiful figure occupying all the space between the two frames. The left leg is standing while the corresponding arm is raised with the lens in his hand. On the right of the figure there is a dashing dolphin. On the right of the dolphin there is a part of land with the roving boat on the bird. The figure described corresponds to the symbolization of Poseidon was temple was near the river Mar. The principal conclusions. First of all, some outcomes of galleries rock and the public fountains. The excavation of a gallery rock was considered a fundamental technique of ancient hydraulic engineering, directly derived from mining engineering. The slope of the gallery does not depend on the ground of a college. The minimum gallery section was determined by the need of human access. Roman public fountains were usually located in the street. The simplest form of street fountain was a kit with an oblong stone basin, and the fountains were deliberately designed to overflow in order to clean the street. So finally, some conclusive remarks about the Roman aqueduct and the Elvius fountain in Sardegica and Montalbino. The static gallery does not have a uniform cross section along its length. In fact, there are four different kinds of roof in the gallery. The aqueduct is still used and continues to supply the Elvis fountain with spring water. The simultaneous presence of the fountain on two divinities of the river Sarno, as well as Poseidon, near the river mouth, was expressly designed in order to symbolize the reef along its path. <coughs> then finally, the Elvis fountain is different from the public fountains in Nerd Pompeii because it was made from a single block of white marble. Thank you very much for your attention.